All righty, everybody. Second Life MOOC, um, 17, and we're supposed to start recording at 3 o'clock, but we've got people in Second Life who want to join us, so what I want to do is uh, go ahead and start, and those people can circle back in. I'll do a little introduction for the MOOC right, right at 3 o'clock, but I'm getting started right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Keisha Ray! I just hey, started. everybody! <laughs> How are you? So I've got folks in Second Life, and this is for the Second Life MOOC. I'm going to formally do that at 3 o'clock, but I had to get started because we're cranking. Awesome. Yeah. Crank on. It's yeah. love. We're, yeah. Yay. We're here. Goodbye. Have a will. Love, love you. you madly. Okay, I just got a kiss. Everything's okay. So, walking into the playground, we've got the playground schedule right here, and there's something happening all the time. Um, right now, we've got, let's see, Station 3. Table three. This is Judy. Let's, let's look at table three here. Hi there. It's pretty cool. Hi. So this is created exactly here what you and I have got. Okay. So we're happy with that. We're going to go into it and we're going to have a look. If for some reason we're not happy sure. between here so, and here, you and I can add more in as we go. So I might add in some extra points. Here is the game and, and then all the different colors. So everybody, this is block cells. So we'll come, come back to them. I'm just going to go randomly to tables and see what's happening. We've got Hugo here. Hugo, tell me just a little bit about what you're doing here. Sure, so this is Cubato. Is this video or is this uh, uh, tape? I'm periscoping. Okay, so... <laughs> okay. You're live, buddy. Oh, You're wow. live, buddy. So this is uh, Cubato, and what we're doing is we're introducing uh, programming and programming concepts to 3 to 6 year olds. Uh, we're not using any screens, we're not using any literacy. Um, it's basically just a hands-on coding tool. So how it works is we've got um, a robot called Cubato, um, we've got a control board here, and we've got instruction blocks. Each of these is a different command. So green is forwards, yellow is turn left, and red is turn right. When you press the button, the robot executes the command. That's so it stunning! <laughs> I want this for nice, my nice living room. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so kids can basically build uh, programs themselves, and basically you can go from A to B using so it's $225. Cool, um, cool. You get Thank you. Hey, hey there. Say hi to the world. Hi. hi. I'm, uh, Periscope. I'm Periscope, yeah. Uh -huh. so I'll get an official presentation in seven minutes, but I have a phone. Cool. cool. And this is David from Science Space. This whole question. I'll be back in a minute. I'll give you a quick overview. I'll come back to all these tables in just a minute. This is Mary Howard showing uh, her AR game and handing out. What do you call these things? What? What do you call these things? I've got hats. Okay then. What would you call it? So we're handing out things. It's a top secret decoder. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. She's got a Hello. AR game going. We've got Chris presenting right now. Technology, the changes in technology, and hey there. Hey everybody. I'm Sean. We've got class crafts here. And I'll, get, I'll get more in depth on all of these as soon as I get my official uh, hour rolling for the Second Life movie. Six minutes to the official introduction. If you're watching this now, you're watching a preview of a one hour periscope that I'll be doing starting at 3 o'clock. Uh, I have to show you this guy. Walking over to the far end here, we've got Wang Tao. I'm Tao from China, and he's sharing an amazing, creative, three-dimensional creation space. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey. 
I'm working on my periscope. Can I move more slowly? Sure. I'll certainly move more slowly when I start. Are you getting dizzy? <laughs> Yeah, thanks for slowing me down. I really need that. Um, oh, yeah. We got Kay Novak here from Games and Simulations. Talk to Hi there. Hi there. Hey. Randy's Dr. another Coloradan. Huh? He's another Coloradan. Well, I love me some Colorado. <laughs> My brother in law and sister in law are in Colorado. <laughs> in Denver. So, I'm going to start the official SL Moot Periscope in five minutes. Sure, sure. But I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> nice Call. to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> we have candy. I wish that uh, I could send some candy through the lens to you guys. What? We have Heather playing Minecraft That's over here. Brand new player. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's fun. She's a brand new player. She just started last night at the games. Uh, the games party yes. here at Disney San Antonio. And I'll be back to you, lady. All right, then. I'm just sort of vamping and giving you a sense of the ambiance here as we... Ah, beautiful. Oh, gear up. I see in about four minutes I'll do an official introduction and we'll get going for real. No worries. King's no worries. Gonna, King's gonna no, 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 he's been around. No, I've just you guys talk to me. Where are you from? Uh, well, I'm from Australia, <laughs> Melbourne, just out of Melbourne in Australia. Kim's from Adelaide in South Australia. Oh, I'm beautiful. I bet you think I talk funny. Yeah. Kim, we talk normal. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and and Anne's similar. She's from Melbourne, yeah, just outside of Melbourne. Melbourne. I just had some great advice from a viewer who says, could you please move slower? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. You know, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. All right. Here are all the playgrounds that show up here. We'll, we'll do an official start in just a few minutes. So please check back in. We'll get some in-depth information from all of these places. That's Stephanie there in the purple shirt. She's uh, from Classcraft. It looks like she's documenting Class craft table, which is right there at station four. Well, let's try that. How does that work? That's a great idea. I'm getting great ideas from viewers. Feel free to give me more of those. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to share with friends in Second Life and all around the globe here who couldn't get to ISTE in San Antonio. Yeah, be interesting to see, see what this does in the uh, recorded video. Place is rife with them. Okay. Okay. Chair of the right there in the blue and white. Chair of the games and simulations. Mm -hmm. Network is from Colorado.
All right, you guys. I'm just about ready to get started. I'm going to go to the front. Okie dokie. There's a lot happening down that hall is post recession, so I see about three o'clock on so let's get started. Alright then. Hi you guys, it's Scott Merrick from IST in San Antonio. And I'm gonna periscope for a little bit. The main reason we're doing this is for the Second Life MOOC uh, 17, which is happening right now. And it has been happening all month. There's lots going on there. But I'm in ISTE 17 in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. And um, I'm going to spend the next hour going around to the tables that are in this playground, which is some you'll probably see me. This is for the Second Life MOOC and uh, also for our friends in Second Life um, at the Virtual Environments Network VEM headquarters who can't be in San Antonio. So, um, doing this for them. This morning we, we gave the uh, Virtual Environment Network Pioneer of the Year Award at a PLN Leaders Breakfast to Beth Ghost Raven, aka Beth O'Connell. I see Nan just came in. It's her first day on Periscope. Nan is with the Second Life Moves and I want to thank her for, for inspiring me to do this today. Um, I'm the chair of the Virtual Environments Network and uh, have been off and on since it was founded. I'm, I'm a co-founder. Um, and we meet every week or so, every week in Second Life or in Open Simulator or somewhere else, another virtual environments platform. The sketch is posted in about a dozen places so people can look at it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, you can, uh, I guess, pause your movie and take a look at this, but this is everything that's going on. The, the tables are named in the bottom left of this. And I'm going to take you to every table as we go so that you can get a sense of the excitement here. Um, all right, so let's move. Let's go in order. This will be fun. You can see there's... People are engaged at these tables all along, and I really want you to see Hugo sing in the red shirt there. Uh, it's coding for free hey, reader, free readers. Anybody here do escape rooms? Whoa! -oh. Escape rooms? Anybody else do escape rooms? <laughs> okay, we can call them by the brand name too, Breakout EDU, but you can do escape rooms, they're free. So, our lovely. <laughs> Okay, I'll get started here. You can't and, mistake and your Google. It'll here, be coming up and coloring all of us, I'm sure. It is a, a one minute promo that we made for our for our teachers to learn about escape rooms. So this is this is how we started them out and teased them with this trailer for a bit. I'll tell her hey when she's <laughs> maybe I'll tell her you hey now. You see the ubiquitous lock box because that always happens. So, Kate's presenting on escape rooms. I'm going to go to the tables while she's working. I guess you can guess that this is station one. Welcome, thanks for joining. So, Anne Frank House is over here. So, if you want to use a box, it's a different world. So, when I want to do a project, this is Mary Howard. Known as Daisy May. And so, um, Mrs. Howard, and she worked with sixth graders in New York. And she's demonstrating her girls in open simulators, in simulators, and she's working in augmented reality. Yeah. Well, in there and in the real world. Yes, virtual education. Um, and then they go in and they design, they build based on this work. And um, last year we you're not going to be able to hear Mary because of Kay's, Kay's got a microphone. She's got the cannon. So you can see the people are, are listening in closely and learning. Uh, Mary Howard is a sharer. So, so if you're interested in this stuff, contact me and I'll put you in touch with her. And uh, 
She uh, also, you can also find her, I believe, as Mrs. Howard on uh, Teachers Pay Teachers. Thank you so much. She's got a nice little side cottage industry going there. So she's sharing on using virtual environments in the classroom here. All right, thanks you guys for joining. Oh, good. I got her. This is um, based on the Second Life technology, but it's called Open Sim, and it's viewed through a viewer. We're viewing it through something called Singularity. It doesn't cost anything for a district to do, but it does cost resources in terms of the server space that you have to have in order to store the world. Um, and then, as far as what you do with it, that's really up to the, the educator. You know, you get you get green land, you get nothing here, and you go in and you say, oh, what do I want my students to do? Do I want them to build? Do I want them to, you know, look at something? Do we want to um, have a completely immersive educational experience and they and network and interact and, you know, create themselves? So you can do pretty much anything with it. Okay, so if, if, you, create, like, if you have, like, a computer, you get a server. Yeah. Do you... The other kids will have, they have a link or something? A URL. So when you, yeah. open, up, okay. when you open up the Singularity Viewer, okay. it asks for your grid. And the grid is the URL that gets them to the server where the world is located. Yeah, and it's very, again, I teach 11 year olds and it's very easy for them to get on and they know how to click grid manager, type in the URL, and they figure that out fast. So what server does your grid reside on? The BOCES server. Oh, it's our board of cooperative so extension Andy service. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, now, so, we have got a majority of, you know, a plethora of different projects that I'm showcasing here and things that we've done. Um, the technology is a little harder to get your hands around, but once you do, it's amazing. Really, really rewarding. So, just just for you. Uh, I'll show you what that does. Say hi to your pals in Second Life. Hi, pals in Second Life. Hi. <laughs> and in the Second it's Life Oh. <laughs> so, this was. All right, so. Let's, let's swing in into K for just a second. It's local color. Is we came up with this template for it. While she's looking, I'll do a quick pan. You guys, and we have two you guys chat amongst yourselves. We have the version that is your I'm sure I don't bump into anybody is here. going to inspect it. It has every single thing that you would put on the same as, say, a lesson plan. We, we have here the number of clues you're going to have, what are the in-room characters, the additional characters, the list of stages of sequence, I am a product of Boise State University, so there's no way that instructional, instructional objectives would go. <laughs> and again, our K is also a theory. And then we also have it where you so can we'll storyboard it out. So so this is one of the on templates for our, um, this was for our, our teachers' all, meeting our weekly too. to feel like they were really everything in the place. Now, the network. Like All right, station number two. This, friends, is big news. This is a virtual world that will run on your browser. So this runs in a browser, it runs on desktop, and it also runs on um, uh, Android and uh, iOS. It'll run on both of them eventually. We're still developing the user interface for those. But as you can see on this one here, it's totally functional. You see, like that ladybug cost me three bucks to use. What was the puzzle to be solved? The whole thing only cost me fifteen dollars to make. What part of the SLO was it going? I could almost afford that. What's your desired outcome? What's that? I could almost afford that. Say hi to your friends in Second Life. Oh, hi everybody. Periscoping. So you're broadcasting live right now? Yeah, I'm broadcasting live for an hour to the Second Life. So this is a beautiful, beautiful. 
virtual no, world. And I'm going to leave uh, Joey. This is Joey Obama. Obama? Obama? Not Obama. Obama. <laughs> and there's Chris who just finished presenting. Hey, how are everybody in Second Life? Hey, everyone in Second Life. This is Abacus, not me. This is That's Abacus, this is me, me It's Abacus Capellini. <laughs> I've got you a Capellini here. And he's actually Chris design was oversaw all of this design this year, yeah. and I was so pleased to <laughs> delegate it. But I didn't care if he screwed it up, but he did a really good job. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about our first one that we ever did. Hey, the first this is the ISP uh, Virtual Environment and Games and Simulations Network uh, Playground at UC17. And there are six tables and ongoing presentations. And I'm trying to, I got some really good, yes, it is Joey. I really got some uh, good advice from somebody early on. I went on just before we started the second last MOOC presentation. And someone, a uh, viewer said, would you please slow down? And then another said, would you please turn your camera sideways so we get a wider view? And if you have any ideas, I might miss them because I'm also trying not to bump into people. But, uh, it is a great place to be with you. Yeah, this, he was just demonstrating that space, and now he's getting into the meat of it. He's getting, you know, that and how, how you use it for the Unity engine, game engine. Once you get it, it's gotten, and you really, you can do almost anything. I'm so looking forward to using Sign Space, as S I N E Space in order to get my Unity jobs back. I had some real uh, basic skills mastered a while back, but I, I haven't really messed with it for a while. Let's go back to Kate for just a second. But we made them more like what we thought would be old files from the CDC. Then we also found out some things like if you get yellow paper and a yellow highlighter, you can write on it and you don't see it. And the only way to be able to see it is using a black light. Well, that meant our faculty and our students had to figure out why were all these yellow papers around and, and why were they about, oh, well, I've, I've hidden this in plain sight. It's a little while, but eventually so they, they got there. Okay? Yeah, the thing of it the is, heart. there is a free app on Android for a black light. We also ended up, just in case that wouldn't work, we started ending up having having the science teacher run in with the ostrich and a black light, saying, she told me to bring this ostrich and the black light. <laughs> so the, the students knew the black light had to be used somewhere. So the story went on that the only way to get out of this quarantine was to figure out what dose the population of the city of Longmont needed. So they had to run around and do a lot of things. Like they had to figure out and they had to get on their devices and find out what is the population of Longmont. Um, what is the average weight of someone in the U.S.? They had to go to the CDC to this. Then they had to figure out some math problems. We left them some formulas that they had to figure out. And then we left a slide on the microscope. And it's something about ostrich mites. And I'm not a science person, so for me it was really disgusting. But <laughs> the science teacher went ahead and left it there. She also scattered some books throughout. So that okay, they I'm going to head off from her. I just want to give you a taste of what's going on. I'm going to go, actually, I'm not going to Station 3. I'm going to Hugo. Hey. hey. How's it going? Going well. Hi, Hugo. How are you? So this is the real presentation I was sort of practicing earlier. But this is fascinating, you guys. And I want you to, you're, you're talking to people who are in Second Life, who are colleagues of ours who couldn't come to the conference. Uh -huh. And also the Second Life MOOC. This yes. will be recorded for the Second Life MOOC, which is okay. gone. It's happened all month long in June. And uh, I promised them that I would bring them bring a, some, bring them a little ISTE. Okay. So, so awesome. I just met Hugo today, but he's extraordinarily personable. And uh, we've got this thing, man. Tell me about this thing. So this is um, Cubato. It's very loud over there. 
Uh, this is Kubeto, and we're introducing coding to three to six year olds. Um, without coding to three to six year olds. I just want to repeat that. Thank you. Uh, with, with no screens and no literacy. Uh, so we've got robots, control board, and instruction blocks. Each one of these is a different command. Forwards, turn right, turn left. And you can create sequences on the board like so. And when you press the button, it executes the command. Where is he? Where is he? What do you call him? Cubato. Can you spell that for me? Uh, oh, is he down here? I can show it. There you go. There you go, Cubato. The easiest way to learn coding. I believe it means little, little cube in Italian. Lit oh, it's an Italian word that means little cube. Yeah, Italian and it is Italian. a little cube, but I'll tell you what. You know, the grid that it's on is really quite attractive. And I like to have this in my living room. And I don't have any three to six year olds in the, in the house, but... You can just program this to get you a coffee or whatever. <laughs> whatever you like, it's easy. Where are you from? London. All right. Yeah, we've, two of us have flown out here just for, this, just for this event. That's a long train ride. Long train ride, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't get the train. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is awesome. So are you on the vendor floor? Yeah, we've got a booth. I'll be looking uh, for your booth too. Yeah, 2332. Three, 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 two. If you're at this scene watching this, it's at... 2332. Two, three, two. Booth 2332. Three, two. In, in the British Pavilion. Oh, there's a, they a British... sequestered you guys? Yeah, we've just got our own... Uh, yeah. All the Brits are over there near them, so... If you're here at SE and you want to talk to some nice British people... Uh, Go to 2332 and sort of wander around that general area. All right, go. let's go back to K for just a second. So we've had over 500 students do um, dino zombies. And our session. Yes, you heard right. The word is dino zombie. And we also had a humanities course decide to do it. So basically, what I guess, I guess what I'm saying here is go ahead and try it. Go ahead and think about who you can introduce this to, and do absolutely do not do this alone. Okay? Go find a buddy. You guys go get a hot beverage or some kind of cold drink, it doesn't matter. And sit down and brainstorm and think about the silly ways that you can introduce this. Because for us, this whole escape room started with Kristen bringing in her ostrich Halloween costume and letting us all see it and laugh at it. So, that is about all oh, I have. Do you guys have questions? Or Say hi, here's, here's Joey. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? You know Lear Lobo? Yeah. Yeah, she, I co-presented with Lear. In. She's watching. Okay, hey Lear, how's it going? <laughs> so this is our uh, our sine wave oh, okay. virtual world. This is the nature quest. As you can see here, uh, we're basically going through with a non-scripting, no scripting required quest system where you can set up your own NPCs very easily and have your conversation steps. And I'll show you what this is like in the game engine. So as you see here on screen, this is a non, no scripting required environment where you can go in and just plug things in as steps. So Granny talks, the player talks, Granny talks, and you can add in your animations if you want to. You can add in sound files if you want to use sound clips. And you can even check a little box here that says use lip sync. And it automatically syncs uh, the lips based on the hertz cycles. So, and it's we, easy for you to say. Yeah, it's just checking the box. <laughs> so we we entered open beta last November. We're standing up our educational grid next month. And I think you'll find the pricing is very affordable. Plus, show us the pricing screen. You, you get, get yeah, you get a, uh, this well, this is, this is about what the pricing is, but it's going to be a little bit different on the education grid that we're standing up. I think it's going to start about $14.95 a month and go up to $75. But that's for 10 sims, and I think we're talking 200 concurrent users. We're liking that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you. <laughs> so you can have like 200 students in the world all at the same time. For $14.95 a month. No, that's the, the higher end one for $75. Uh, oh, for $14.95, I think we're talking about uh, 
probably like three regions and 30 confirmed users. So that's a classroom, folks. $14.95 a month. And for how many how many sims? For, that's for three sims. Yeah, three sims yeah. for the fourteen ninety five. But you know, seriously, how are you going to use three sims? You know, don't be greedy, folks. And you can also yeah. use OR files, o Open Sim archives. Oh my you God! You can convert them over and make it right into uh, the Unity. Uh, they have the steps for it laid out by the University of Edinburgh. Uh, Professor Austin Tate has already taken his oil rig from OpenSim and converted it all over to space. So I can take the vast virtual school that I created in Kitely and save the ore file. As long as you can save an ore file from Kitely, you can, yes. Yeah, you can. Okay. So, and I have rights to everything there. Cool. So, and that's the other issue when you're doing the ore files, you got to have rights for oh, stuff all transfer. and one thing that makes this a little bit different from some of the other worlds, too, is um, ours is a PG-13 sim uh, grid. So we don't want adult content on the main grid. We might have an adult grid late, later on, but right now we want to make sure everything is safe on the main grid and it stays that way on the main grid. If Board Holder, are you listening to this? If we do have an adult <laughs> grid later on, it would be totally separate from the main grid and nothing from the adult content can ever come back onto the main grid. So we yes. want to make it safe and we want it to have a good reputation and be a place that's safe for teaching and for learning. So that's uh, that's awesome, you guys. Yes, everybody needs safe. That's one very big question answered. And we you also get a uh, sim for free. So if you want to start today, uh, just one thing I'd recommend when you sign up at developer.space, uh, go in and uh, it'll have it already checked, but just leave it checked that it says that you're creative because you are creative. Okay? Yeah, you are. All educators are cre creatives, in my opinion. So uh, that'll give you access to some additional things as well. So you can get started for free, go noodle around, and once you have, once you've seen how wonderful it is, uh, you know, spring for that 495 or the 1495 or, yeah. or whatever personal that you can do. Um, he'll have his educational pricing up very shortly. Okay. Cool. And hey, so thanks, yes, Scott. yeah, I may be swinging back by. Okay. Thank you. All right. Presentation of Gohan Freeman from our London office here at the top of the hour. All right then. Yeah, he's, he's piping his uh, London office partner in. Um, hi there. Hi again. Hey, there's a Hugo again. We're passing through. I got 13 viewers live and we're archiving it. So thanks for coming in. <laughs> All right, so now that was through. Let's go to station three. We're not making very quick progress here, but I think that we'll have some time to do it. Station three is the Aussies. All right, here we are in Australia with Bloxels. Bloxels or Bloxels? Bloxels, ALS. Bloxels. 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 That's how we decided to start at a high We could just do that all day, couldn't we? We probably could. <laughs> okay, so I've got. I'm sorry, you. Oh, it's you again. again. Ben Gallagher. From lovely Australia. Yeah. There he is. And, how are you going? And we're, 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 we're streaming this into Second Life and, and uh, well, sharing it with people who are gathered in Second Life to watch it, who can't be here at the conference. And uh, also this is for the Second Life MOOC, which is going on all through the month of uh, June. Yeah. And so there are viewers from there as well. So uh, many of them may be in virtual worlds as we speak. But I want to, I want to learn a little bit about Bloxels. So. Yeah, well, Bloxels is a game development program it's sort of it's pre-coding, so there's not a lot of coding involved in it, but it's a really simple way of developing games for kids. So you get a board, such as this black one here. There you go, it's a blackboard with indented squares. And then you fill it in with different coloured cubes. Sorry Anne, I'm going to steal this. And what's better in, a, in an indented square with a cube? That's right. And it even just sits just that perfect little bout for little fingers to get it out. And so each colour represents something different. So green is your landscape. Blue, funnily enough, is water. Red is a hazard, everyone says lava, but it can be whatever you want it to be. Quicksand. White, it could be, yeah. <laughs> White are story squares, so you can add some writing to it, you can add a checkpoint to end the level. Pink is your power-ups, so there's bombs available, there's jetpacks, there's all different things that you choose. Purple are your bad guys, 
and they can move. It's basically, and you scan it with the app, and you end up with a platform game in an instant like that. So in a second, we'll probably see see how it scans Absolutely. and goes into the. And yeah, so yellow are coins that you collect, and orange are exploding blocks. Sorry, my. If you have one, have a look at your hands. About to demonstrate. Yeah. It Hello, Ann. Say hi to the folks. Hello. <laughs> So, so she just scanned the session. one that, Sorry. No, I'll come over here because we need to we need to first serve our people who are here. Do it again. People who so can, yeah. So she it. just uh, and it's created exactly it. what you and I, pretend it's you and I, have done. So we're going to go into it. Um, as students, we want instant feedback. So you and I, we want to play it straight away. So we go into the play button and we're in our game. All right. So awesome. In, yep. Pretty cool. Ah. Use the home button. <laughs> so starting here, these are what we call a story block. So you as the teacher could have information in there that you want the students to to learn. Or uh, as a student, I can use it as an assessment tool or an information tool and I can put information in there for you. I'm a terrible gamer, so, so I'm no good at this, but we'll... Okay, so the thing is, you and I can play it straight away and let's pretend you can get up to that next block. But if I couldn't, you and I instantly could go, that's not working, so we're going to go straight back out, we're going to edit it and we're going to add in some more blocks so that we can make sure that we get into there. So you can tweak it on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. Then we go, you and I tweak it, we fix it, we go straight back in, play it again. I'm going to move out of station three and I may revisit some of these if I still have some time at the end. But uh, this is fascinating. I love the, the move towards the integrating the tactile with the digital and then the virtual extension. And you know, there's Hugo over there. <laughs> he says free ages, it's just coded, free coding for AJ. Have you talked to him? Oh, no, ages I have. No, we just got here. Oh, okay. No screens. But, cool. but you program the robot. Look at it move. Awesome. Talk to him. He's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. All right. So that was station. Sorry, that was station three. I'm going to go to station four. And buckle up your seatbelts because we're going to class craft. And so they're going to show up first time in class craft and actually do these quests. And then we're going to talk to the districts to run district-wide all their PD through class craft. And then you get like Scott a speed and then you end up getting like tech grants <laughs> and all kinds of stuff depending on what you have it. So anyways, there's like a whole kind of plan in using this framework. The other big thing that's kind of important is that we built out an API. And so the idea is that we're going to then be able to connect class craft with them. You can get points for that back to class craft, right? So the idea is to really bring in a bunch of different partners and then start looking at how their content could go in. And where we'd like to be in a year or two is that you essentially watch a YouTube video, the first node, about say Rome. The second node is Minecraft. You go into Rome in Minecraft and you spend a couple hours there and it's talking to class craft and doing points on stuff. And you come out of that. And the next thing is like a Google VR thing in the room of Rome, and it's like some kind of assessment that, you know what I mean? Like, because everybody's building all this crazy good content. Good good it could be the bandwidth so in the room. We've got some engaged and folks here. Back to uh, students' own experience in the classroom, and like, the actual experience of having a classroom. So, class has been used, um, we're in uh, 10 languages, we're sort of by countries, uh, but two and a half million people are using it. We're starting to do school-wide rollouts now, where like schools are basically turning their school into Hogwarts. Look at them dressed like, up in their gear. They get, they get all worked out, and then this turned into uh, like full, like it just built up into like just. I think, guys, I think what I will do, uh, man, I'm going to uh, stop periscoping, then I'm going to start it back up. We're only through station four, there are six stations, and uh, I, I think I, I think you're right, whoever commented that, uh, whoever commented that, she was using us uh, in November last year. I tell you what, stay on it, whoever's coming in. She's, uh, she's you guys watch the hands up again, let me know through text. By the end of school year, they were at over 100 teachers using Classcraft. And she like set up this whole PD thing with badges and things, and then if people did the PD, she'd get them upgraded accounts. And like, 
and it was like it was really well done how she rolled it out. So, so it's interesting for us because we started doing things like uh, gamifying TBIS, and then we bring in all those standards at the school level, and those settings for the different teachers would be kind of, uh, some of them would be set, not all of them, but like the base ones that the school decided to just sort of reinforce in terms of positive behavior. And then they would give the apps to bus drivers and cafeteria people. And so people are getting points like outside oh, of the class, so like all of them. Oh, that's awesome. That was really helpful, bus drivers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Outside for those cafeteria workers and bus drivers, I'm not going to So anyways, there's lots of ways to scale that. Yeah, and Kaji is wiring buses now. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with them. That's sort of the national. So you guys should work with Kinji to bring it onto school buses. Yeah. It all, they're also wiring backpacks to go home. This is Ann Fellier, by the way, folks. Yeah. She's a goddess. Oh, that's great. And did you say the brain pops on really? An ed tech partner? goddess. Well, the partner stuff hasn't actually been, like, we're still just building And she's just partner. attending the session with Devin, so. We're going to start reaching out over the fall to have those conversations. We're, like, essentially, the, the kind of vision is this. like is to integrate on top yes. of these systems and then open it up to other people. So, and awesome. so we have Google Classroom and Microsoft, those are partners, right. and then these guys are going to be coming a bit further down in the year. So this would just be like the central problems in So there's the yeah, game plan, folks. Yeah, it's the engagement that's on top of all this stuff that's kind of boring and like functional. And it's like, well, how can we get creative, actually? Okay, talk to me about price. It's free to use, and then uh, for a teacher license, it's eight bucks a month for all your classes and all your students. So for 96 Whoa. bucks, you can basically use Classcraft Premium, and then at a school-wide level, it starts at around 1,500 bucks, and that covers all the That's teachers. very affordable. Uh, so what do you get between the free and the eight bucks a month? So uh, the free version, basically, you have all the classroom management stuff. So this uh, this first page, I keep I'm getting like lots of awesome. Stuff. So you get all of this stuff, basically. Um, and then you get some of the, so for students, this is what a student portal looks like. So they see their character, they can see their friends, but then we, like all of our yes, no, uh, we can work on illustrators that. I can delegate that. come out of Ubisoft and EA and stuff. So we develop like <laughs> just a ton of gear and then it's, it's all like mixed and mashed. <laughs> so you can start like actually customizing your thing. And then if you get a whole set, it unlocks the accompanying pet. So like, oh my so, <laughs> no, guys, like. And we have mages, warriors, and healers, and then we have two sex, you know, like, and there's 18 gear sets at the moment for, for each class, and so there's like a gazillion possibilities of making new stuff, which if you want a selfie with the cutouts are right over there. Um, but yeah, so basically there's just a bunch of new stuff, and then the idea right now, so this is like the quest mode, this is like our first version, basically we get like assignments and message the teacher directly at the same time. So we really wanted to create an experience that was just like one place where the student could go and then or or that this works in conjunction with like a Google Classroom or something like that. Um, and so yeah, so that's that's set up and then we, we even have a parent app that the parents can get points on it if the teacher wants to go that that route and then wow. they can start seeing Do they get points for talking to their children? No, but they do get <laughs> points for finishing their homework on time. <laughs> This is Devin, by the way, at Classcraft. Yeah. Right. I was talking with Zach. Oh, yeah. So I was asking, like, is it a way, because, you know, we're currently using Class Dojo, we have a program as a way to kind of, like, implement this, you know, seamlessly. And, I mean, it seems like it, so. I definitely want to try it out with, like, a couple of teachers that got in mind. You should start small. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, the other ones will want it. It's a good way to... Give me a wave, Devin. Oh, my man, appreciate that. Thank you. Devin, give me a wave. Okay. Devin, Devin, give me a wave real quick. Thank you so much. I gotta go. Hi. We're, we're right, periscoping for our people in Second Life. <laughs> so, I want to do this <laughs> All right, so... We're not hanging up, I gather. Are we okay? Because I'm going to go to an unnumbered station next. This is how we roll in ISTE, by the way. We, uh... <laughs> Kay ran into, uh... These folks at ISTE, I guess yesterday? She ran into... This is Wing Tao. Hey. 
and we're so are you doing a live cam yeah it's oh, a periscope okay. um we've got people in second life who are uh-huh. sitting together as avatars and watching this in an external browser uh-huh. uh live so they're they're people who are members of our group in second life mm-hmm. um but they, they couldn't get to issy for various reasons so they meet where we meet every week <laughs> oh, and so they're, they've got a back chat going there and a, and a chat going here. They're saying hi. I've got seven viewers now, but can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here um, with Dat- Datory Lab? Yes. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's what our company called. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is uh, we, uh, we we made a, a 3D creation tool in virtual reality, and you can play with the additional um, play there and uh, and whatever you build there, uh, you can export it to a 3D printer. Then no. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Um, we, we hope to bridge the gap between the virtual world and the reality, you know, so we can. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the, so, you know, in case you were so stunned by that that you didn't get it all, <laughs> they are totally creating a platform where you can create designs and objects in a virtual space that you can end up printing to a 3D printer. Did I follow that right? Yeah. And and also you could just go in and create other objects, right? Uh, yeah, so now like even it's like kind of playing with planks, but you can also uh, like, use a brush to create like digital clay. It's more like freeform-ish. We're talking uh, art here, creativity. Uh, art, right? Uh, yeah. Like you've got, if you've got kids studying abstract art, they can go grab a paintbrush color. Yeah. And they can change the tool, right? Yeah. So that tool is a like replicating gun, so you can just, like uh, select an area and replicate whatever you just built. So. That's a, that's quite wonderful. So Kay ran into um, Wang Tao uh-huh. yesterday. And this is how we roll, guys. So we just decided to give them the space to demonstrate what they do. And they've had a lot of action. Feel free to ask him. You can wear those goggles. <laughs> I'm looking to see what he's doing. You can, uh, you can actually create... Well, I'll let Wen Tao tell you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's, hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so um, this is a uh, uh, 3D uh, creation tool in virtual reality. And uh, you can play with digital clay in the way it works. Yeah, environment. That is true. And whatever you build you there, back if you, you like can move in uh, here. And send it to a 3D printer and They'll let you wear those goggles and yeah. play with it. No, that's okay. I don't have it's not good for some people. Some people with vertigo or... I tried that. What do I do when I can see mm-hmm. where it is? Right? I don't like the way to do it. I could get slightly more I enjoy it, but a lot of people don't. Yeah, I've got... I've got Nellie Muller on here. This I is think a, you know, the feel and everything. Do you mind if I grab you here while you're saying that? Yeah, but I, I thought video. it was... Some, no, I don't mind. <laughs> We're periscoping. We've got friends who are in Second Life who could come to the conference, so they're watching the periscope together in Second Life. And the, the Second Life MOOC, which has been going on all month, this is a one-hour presentation for that. So um, Those folks are not all virtual environments. This is virtual environments, not what folks, but um, they are mostly educators and mostly interested in seeing how this can be used. But he just explained to me that um, you you can build in here and create things. And he was playing with plants a little while ago. You may have seen that. Yeah, I saw them that. Plants. And uh, you go, you select a color, and you draw and build. And whatever you build, you can export into a 3D printer or a 3D printer. So it's. He called it bridging the gap between um, sort of virtual modeling and uh, an intuitive creativity. This is nuts. Uh, she's <laughs> this is great. All kinds of videos of people working with goggles. But this teacher has just already picked it up and she's got a paint brush and she's created her first object. There she goes. <laughs>
No, they're not printing out in color. We don't have a 3D printer here, but uh, I would love to get my hands on this. And it's cool. Look at that. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> She's having a blast. <laughs> Walking around the other side of it. I wonder if it's going to get antenna. <laughs> Yeah, I tried it earlier, um, and I created a sign for DNS and a sign for DNN, and it's floating in the sky on the monitor. Right, so. It is a virtual 3D doodler. <laughs> She's walking all around the room here. <laughs> Don't walk too broadly, you'll trip over a stool. <laughs> All right. I hope that I'm hope that I'm still clear and clean. I'm gonna go here to uh oh. Are you guys are you guys packing up? Or are you packing in? Oh, yeah, they they split the time so Okay, so so who are you? I'm Scott. I'm the chair of the Virtual Environmental Network. Nice to meet you. Um, so this is Richard. Smart. This is the guy who got accepted. Hello, Richard. This is a 360 DR. So we have all of our kits. So we're going to let people. Awesome, know awesome, well. awesome. So yeah. I'll give you time to set up. I'm doing a periscope for another 20 minutes or so. So I'll swing over and catch, yeah. catch what you're doing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good to meet you. Here's what they're doing. CRBGIT 360 video capture kit, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, sorry about the time on the camera, I was jawboning. And here's Hugo wowing somebody else with a robot. And, um, <laughs> and then you can pay more for the Oh, good, I didn't know that they'd split that. That's because I let, or I delegated the setup to. Did they? Our boy Chris Luke. When did they do that, by the way? Microsoft? What, about a year ago? Okay, I didn't know that. Fine. Fine. Interesting. Uh, fine. And so Nana became, I could. Okay, so five is switching over, so I'm going to quickly go over to uh, number six, which is Franken over here. I see Sarah Raleigh. This is Heather playing Minecraft. We're back to Heather. And, and Heather just started Minecraft last night, so this is a really good example for those of you who may not have dived, dived in. Dove is not a word, I think. For those of you who haven't dived in, it's like she's surviving and she's... I lost myself in my mind. I've gotten lost many times. And are you on the Vistie server? Yeah, that looks familiar. No, I'm not, actually. Oh, okay. In my little hole that I dug in the wall. Because you I made that? What else to do. So she, yeah. So she created this hole. And made, did you make the torches? Yeah. yeah so I she's did. a quick study, I have to say. Well, I had a tutor. That helps. <laughs> a tutor helps. Yeah. And I'd like to say if you haven't done the uh, uh, Summer of Survival, yeah, Rosie, I, I jumped into that uh, about three weeks ago, and I haven't been in there. Uh, too much, but I did survive my first night, and I killed a monster, and and I had great fun. I'm sorry, I built, built a little hovel under the ground within uh, sight of the of the uh, safe house. And there's Chris again, and Kay. And how you doing, Chris? Pretty good. Say hi to Rosie and those guys. Oh, hey, Rosie. We were scalable. Yeah, scalable. Scalable game design. Awesome. So we're scalable game design and these yeah. guys these guys are showing their product. It's really kind of thinning out there must be some event where people are just so tired. Um, <laughs> Already tired. <laughs> well here's a short version of it. This is Dr. Alexander Repening. Right. Did I pronounce that right? Repening. Repening. 
And he's going to tell us a little about Agent Cube, Agent Cube's creativity. Yeah, so basically this is a tool to make games and simulations. And we have some very unique mechanisms to make, for instance, 3D shapes, which is very difficult before. So we wanted to preserve this idea that one can draw a two-dimensional shape. For instance, here I'm trying to draw a volcano. I'm drawing it from the top. But then I'm inflating it on the right-hand side. And With slider I'm, bars. With slider bars. <coughs> and then I'm adjusting a little noise to make it a bit more ruggedy. I'm going to pick some red color, which I paint on top. Uh, I remove the noise and finally push down the ceiling to make it look as if the lava is not blowing on top. Good lord, lava. instant volcano. Instant volcano. <coughs> and of course I can keep drawing. So it's a completely different way to think about 3D. It's called inflatable icons. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so can you export those? Yeah, you can. And you can even print them in a 3D printer. <coughs> so, so, sorry. So again, we've got the 3D printer integration. You can print those things in a 3D printer too. Mm -hmm. That is creative. That's really... And the next thing, of course, you, you can 3D print them, but you can also put them into a 3D world. Right, so you inflate the various shapes, like a uh, yeah, two-dimensional one, and then you put them into a world, like in this particular case, into a Sokoban game. <coughs> and, and then you actually select the object, and you become the object, put in maybe a little background, run the game, and, and, and now run it in first-person view. Right? And so with very few steps, you started getting a 2D game, to turn it into a 3D game in just a couple of minutes. That's amazing. Cool, cool stuff. So this alone, you know, just the inflatable icon part that was about three patents to get that working. Boy, I've got it. What's the price of this? Is, there, is it for sale? Yeah, I'm not the commercial person, I'm the researcher, but, but uh, there's a free version uh -huh. that, that has some limited functionality. There is a, a version that does cost, uh, there's different licenses per students, per class, per school, per lab, per school district, etc. So, here's another one. Now, how would they find this when they go looking? So, the best place would be. To, Google is your friend. Yeah. Would be to go to this website. Excellent. I will be exploring this. This looks like it would be awesome for middle school. Oh yeah, it is for middle school. It's even for elementary school. Kids. Really? It's the programming. Did you see this thing over here that's for preschool, three to, ages three to six? I did not. No screens. It's in the middle over here. Hugo in the red shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to check it out. It's, it's an, I want one of my little ones. <laughs> and I don't have a three to six year old. <laughs> but it looks like so much fun. Uh, yeah, and we do this large scale, so you know we have a uh, scale of game design. It's the curriculum that we have developed with support by the National Science Foundation. So, so we're training middle school, elementary, high school teachers How many nationwide. How they have at this point? Do you know that many? Yeah. Well, for instance, you know, from just this year alone, we had uh, something like uh, 700,000 projects built. Holy moly! Yeah. You're a big deal. <laughs> Thank you for being here and sharing this with everybody. Sure. Have you had some traffic over here? It looks like people. Well, are... you know, he didn't even have an official booth here. Yeah. They just invited well, us to show. Yeah, yeah. That's the way we roll. This was just an impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. All right. All right. That's cool. Yeah, I know, is it? And you're just making up stuff on the fly, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am. I'm just. <laughs> hey, random person, come here. No, I'm not. Come here. Come present. Yeah. <laughs> no. Thank you no. for being here. Oh. Yeah. Glad to be it's here. got, and this is uh, Mark Shoulders? Shoulders. Shoulders. Oops. I just muted my. Hang on. Can you guys hear? It's Mark Shoulders. And shake your hand. Thanks for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so we've got another, I'm seeing we've got another 12 minutes, this is the lowly high, the lowly high. You're going to pop up. Um, it'll pop up on his Twitter feed and we have friends in Connecticut who couldn't make it who are watching. Yeah, Rosie's so. here. Yeah. And uh, Lear's on. Ah, Cynthia. Uh-oh, hey. let me switch.
Yeah, yeah she shouted out to you the minute, but I didn't translate. Yeah, it, it, it was too high pitched. Like, okay, Case, Case will give us a big wave. Big clap, just clapping in her <laughs> tone and a bottle. And Simon says. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile, Heather is working Minecraft like a pro. How do you eat? <laughs> how do you eat? Yeah, how do I eat? Uh, this? You left click, you, you hold the item, okay, you got it in your hot tray, and left click two times. Left double click. I think that's the way it works. Try right clicking two times. Oh, I just hold the She's eating for the first time. <laughs> I need to get some help. Yeah, yeah you do. I got hit Works every so time. <laughs> She's having so much fun. I oh, love yeah. the joy of the joy of learning. Okay, so we've been to all the tables. And I've got about ten more minutes here. Let's see. Let's go back and ooh, Classcraft is presenting. So let me let's go watch him. Um, and then you know, you're, you're sort of engaging with your game stuff, and then you end up um, seeing your homework and assignments. So that's Classcraft in a nutshell. Um, well, we just missed it. Um, we're being Never. used in 75 countries, we're in 10 languages, uh, we have about two and a half million people using it. And we've been doing a lot of uh, kind of fun stuff at a school-wide level. So, um, you know, we've got a school in Spain where they're like literally taking this and running with it, uh, creating teams and different houses within their school, uh, and then developing like class-wide culture uh, using Classcraft. So this is a like full-blown dance party that they This is Classcraft, you guys. Uh, when there's like hundreds of kids, and they're kind of getting into it. And, uh, so it's really up to educators to see kind of how far they want to go with it, but our goal is really to create a framework that teachers can use and administrators can use to really connect with other kids around the game. So that's about it. Um, I don't know if you guys have any The demo was saying earlier that um, they actually hand out uh, user accounts to um, cafeteria workers, you know, bus drivers, <laughs> uh, other other members of the school community, and they earn their badges and their their. Uh, yeah, so Classcraft is free to use. Tool. And then, we'll uh, listen to this. There's a premium budget that unlocks more gear and all this kind of stuff, and that's eight bucks a month, and it's per teacher. So it covers all of the teacher's classes and students. So for 96 bucks, a teacher can get it with Classcraft for a whole week. Thanks, Alan. That was specifically for your appreciation and so far. Free to use. And uh, for 96 bucks, a teacher can get accounts for all their students. The school account's about $1,500. Which, you know, if you're familiar with the pricing of all these sorts of platforms, is very, very reasonable. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Anybody have any questions of any of these presenters that you want me to ask them? Because I can go back around. We've got, we're streaming in the second life here for the people who couldn't come to the conference. Want to say hi? Hey, y'all. What's going Randy on? Randy Fels. Randy Foss. <laughs> Randy Foss. Hi there. How are you? Good. Let's come back with Mary for just a minute. Since BJ couldn't be here, make sure to check the. Oh, absolutely. Have you seen this app? Free app? Uh huh. Yarasma? It's an augmented reality app. It's actually been around for a little while. There's Scott is back again. Really, Scott? Is that Arasma? This is Arasma. And so. Um, the player's about all of these in And so this is kind of neat because you can scan it with the app, but I don't know if you can see it from your angle there. That's Leonardo da Vinci, and he's drawing the helicopter. And so it was a Renaissance scavenger hunt. So they had to answer questions about you know, Michelangelo and um, yeah. the Reformation and different things. So he's really not there, but he's so, there. Which is kind of neat. And you can do it off the screen, but you can do it off a piece of paper as well. That's actually in here. Whoop, sorry. This is a live binder of, of resources with more asthma. So it's got that scavenger hunt in there and everything else. 
You take my picture, I'm going to take yours. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I like it. I'm streaming for people who couldn't get to conference. Yeah. So oh, okay. We've got a whole oh, bunch of our team that couldn't come. Um, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Nashville. I'm, the, I'm the chair of the Virtual Environment Network and work with these guys every week. And then we get to come here for help. So sure enough, are you recording me? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We have a question here. If anybody here has questions before I quit, Push it right against the screen. Oh, my God. It says, in ancient winds, I showed sailors where to go. So I had a scavenger hunt set up with, like, eight different questions to help them review for a novel. You know, novel Oh, Mary. Great idea. Yeah, take that. Our PLN information's on the back. That's who we are. And then there's this little card that under his watch there. This is everything that I was just kind of showing in the virtual environment. If you ever create a It shows everything that we do. We meet once a week in second last one. And we virtual world. And we have some of the structured activity that's worth working on. Breakouts, I think it's the most active feel Now I'm doing virtual environment as you just in the cockpit. Which is a whole, you know, different right. businesses. Or this is our facts, professional it's development. Cool. It's, it's not run by a company. So this is called an open no, sim. It's a second life. It's your feet. Life. <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's, uh, Come join us. It's not, so hard, I, to get, not hard to get an avatar. It's not hard to get an avatar. It's really cool. The writer's group is great. We've got me writing poetry again. A viewer called Singularity. It's free. Do I see Rosie's putting some VEJ spam in here? That's good. And they type in the URL. Rosie's putting some VEJ spam in here. That's good. Beth, yeah, nice really. to meet you. I'm Scott. I'm Scott. Yeah. So I have like five, five different things that I do. Create with the curriculum. They all get their games are in and they can fly. Oh. They can get a rat. Classes. That's great. And what, do you, what level were you? So I was an elementary teacher and then I, uh, I worked in Dreambox for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I get these now I was, you know, I'm training teachers. Either made or done. Minecraft or Minecraft mods in my house. Well, come join us, because they, 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 they just had us pick up the augmented reality and 3D learning. So, I just have one more question. Yeah. Like, this is, are you filming all this? Yeah. <laughs> I have to be on for another four minutes, because okay. I promise in an hour. All right, so <laughs> this is all the things that you guys do, or are you guys all just virtual education journal? I'm, I'm, yeah, virtual education journal. Virtual education, 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 education network. Yeah. Virtual environments network, sorry. Yeah. And if you it's amazing. find everything there, yeah. And We're the only PLM that publishes a magazine. Show. So if you need information, this is our PLM. So you guys publish a magazine? Yeah, so the, the new one just dropped. I'm, I'm plugging you here, Rosie. Rosie is in second life watching this. Hi, Rosie. Um, she does yeah, such a great job. Nice to actually meet you. I'm trying to learn <laughs> about your group. <laughs> so this is Beth. Oh, this from, is from Washington State. State. Yes. All right. Seattle. I lived in Alaska for a long time. Oh, that's a little further. It's a little further. Yeah. It's a long, uh, it's it, a does, long it doesn't get dark until 11 right now, so <laughs> yeah. the hotel room here was lovely. <laughs> I got to actually At least sleep. it wasn't on the floor that burned today. Right. Yeah, that's wild. Wow. So you had a question. Let's finish that. Oh, I just, I want to know, like, is this more than one group or is this? There are two groups here. The Games and Simulations Network is here. And that's uh, the woman Yes, we just don't the I know that name. And Chris Luke, who's uh, so in the I blue get, shirt there. I get, you know, no, but I get Novak. Oh, I everybody get gets Novak in there. <laughs> There's Andy, everybody. Say hi, Andy. Hey, hey. We're finishing up the, the day. I just had somebody go, oh my god. The Thinkerer Award winner. <laughs> That's awesome. Who said that? I don't know. I have to track oh, back. But this will be archived. I've right. had a fun hour with these guys. Thinker What's the name of Joey's that. project? Joey's project is called Sign Space. And where is Joey? There he is. Um, Andy on camera. Looks like we're starting to pack up a little bit. But it's only 4 o'clock. Trying to figure out where I plug in at. Uh, let's see. I don't have any. What's the name of your the What's the name of your project, and where do people learn about it? I just had a question. Uh, sine wave. It's uh, sine wave. S I N E. Developer dot uh, space. Developer dot space is where to go for an account. Okay. Do you Are you working on this stuff here? 
Oh, you need to be hooked up? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Where He's got his tech help. All right, you guys, i got about a minute, so I just want to close by saying thank you to the Second Life MOOC for it was funner than heck. And, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, sine wave. Developer.space, if you type that into your search field in your uh, URL field in your browser, you'll find it. Cool. Any other questions before I leave? This has been fun. I'm wearing my antique Second Life shirt. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. We've got another hour here where we're going to be hanging out and, and uh, doing more learning and teaching. Uh, it feels like the day is winding down a bit. The, the traffic has slowed down. But I have, to, I have to sort of let you guys know that this is the record ISTE attendance. There are 21,000 attendees, including vendors and members. That's a little, that's a little poem. This hat, thank you for the compliment, is a lowly high grand poobah hat for the Virtual Environments Network. And I'll be taking it off in an hour and giving it to Andy Wheelock, who will be the chair of the VEN uh, for next year. I'll sit down to co-chair, and guess what will happen the following year? Same thing. <laughs> yep, 21,000. <000. clears throat> I'm just kind of sharing with you guys. I, sh I did a pot. I did a uh, Periscope the other day with Wesley, had a little bit of Wesley Fryer's uh, poster session, and it was just a blast, and it, it convinced me that Periscope is really the platform for this. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Um, <laughs> I started off by saying, oh my God, it's Wesley frickin' Fryer. If you don't know his work, uh, <laughs> you need to know him. So. Here we go, Playground C. This, uh, the sign says we're on till 5.30, but actually we're going to have our annual meeting at 5. And I may periscope that if anybody there wants to join. Um, let me know, just text me or, or let me know if you guys want to do a, a podcast of the annual meeting. Yes, we must have a picture, and maybe we need to take that picture early before people flake out. Check out Classcraft. There's somebody taking a picture of one of the cardboard cutouts. <laughs> and check out Blossels. Because this is nothing but fun, you guys. But they don't do anything. Okay. Yeah, and, and check out Cubetta. I know. So like, this is totally different. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you if you can, if you can like hang on just a minute. It's retails for 200. It used to go for about 150. So we got some goggles going here. And I haven't really talked with you guys. My audience is tapering off, but I do want to make sure that we recognize what you're doing here. This is Mark Yap. With what group are you with, Mark? Um, I'm from the University of Hawaii at Manoa in Hawaii. Oh, I want to visit you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. And that's where your project is held? Yes, it is. Okay. We're also partnered with a K-12 public charter school in Hawaii that's attached to our university. So, a lot of opportunities with students in K-12. Very, very cool. So. Can you give me an elevator speech real quick? We're at yeah. the tail end of my little presentation. Absolutely. So a lot of folks are already familiar with Google Cardboard. We consider that to be our entry level or a jumping off point on the consumption side. So as students learn about VR experiences, we're able to view and consume the experience. We're here today to talk about our middle tier, which is the student creation side and student generated content, which we really believe is important also for place based learning and be able to catch real world 360 video as the midpoint before they get to 3D animation, such as using objects already created um, in Unity, so mm -hmm. that's kind of like the top the top tier and the most expensive tier to get into. But with this, we have a really inexpensive kit, not back here, um, everything from the 360 camera, charging, this is the camera? Yes, it is. That's a piece of, that's a work of beauty. So this camera is, um, a lot of people are familiar with the Beta product, and this actually happens to be a 2K 
product that's still very affordable. So we really hope that our backpacks are able to use in more than not just our classrooms, but classrooms around the world. Very, very cool. So again, the name of the product. If people search for okay. um, the name of the yeah. well, well, the name of the name of your company. So. Oh, it's the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and we're uh, it's here at G I T. 30 G I T. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably a Google of that will get you where you're going, right? right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. So we've got people trying it over here. I'm gonna hang up the phone in here in a minute and try it myself. Cool. Again, I want to thank the Second Life MOOC for forcing the Second Life MOOC uh, in the course at the YouTube channel. And I'm going to say over and out. I love you guys. Thanks for joining us, and see you later.